Hi boys and girls, it's great to be back for another week of Greenwell Street Kids. Do you know, I am so excited because I know that some of you have been busy with your worksheets. I have saw some of the lovely work you've been doing, some of the pictures you've been colouring, and it's been great. So I hope maybe this week some more of you will send some in because I know Naomi's very excited about getting them too. So let's start Sunday School off today in a word of prayer. Let's all pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day at Sunday School. Father, we thank you for the week we've had. Thank you for taking care of each one of us and keeping us safe. Lord, we just want to thank you today for all we have. We thank you for our lovely homes and our parents and our brothers and sisters and friends. Thank you, Lord, that we have schools to go to. Lord, continue to keep the boys and girls safe. We ask you now, Lord, to be with us all as we take part in Sunday School today. Help us to listen, but most of all, Lord, help us to learn all about you and your Son, the Lord Jesus. In your precious name we ask it. Amen. So, today we have Darren here, and Darren has a new part of our memory verse to teach you. Now you're doing really well with it, so all listen to the words, and I want you to hear you being able to say it really, really well. I just love Psalm 23. And we also have William. Now the last day William was here, he told us an amazing story. So I wonder what the story is going to be today. You all keep watching and listening to William. But now it's time for us to get up on our feet and praise God, we're going to sing. So let's go. Absolutely. 
afternoon, but unfortunately Darren isn't with us and my name as you know is Denise and I'm going to fill in for him today. Boys and girls, how are you getting on with Psalm 23? Will we refresh our memories on it? The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Boys and girls, that's the verse that we've come to today. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Can we recap to the verse that we've just finished in the previous two weeks? Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. Boys and girls, David that wrote the 23rd Psalm was a shepherd. And David knew what it was like to look after the sheep. And the shepherds would have taken their sheep during the summer months. They would have taken this, the sheep up to higher parts of the mountains. And that was something that happened every year. But boys and girls, to get to those different pastures during the summer months, they had to go on a journey. And that journey usually took them along the valleys because the valley was where the water was, that the sheep had water to drink. And that, that was the route that the, the shepherd would have used to take his sheep to the new mountainous pastures during the summer months. But boys and girls, in those valleys, there would have been predators, there would have been wild animals. There would, the, the valleys would have been very, very dark in the evenings because of the mountains on either side. And so whilst the valley was the right road for the shepherd to use because it had water and it was the, the, the um, best way to get to the new pastures, there was still things in those valleys that could have um, annoyed the sheep or there was dangers or there was things that would have upset um, maybe the, even the shepherd as well. But the shepherd took the sheep, he led them through those valleys and boys and girls, that is what he said, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Boys and girls, the first thing to realise too, is that the valley was the right path for the shepherd to take the sheep. And that's what that psalm is saying to you and I. When we ask the Lord Jesus to be our shepherd, when we ask him to forgive our sins, do you remember what our sin is? It's anything that we think say or do that breaks God's laws. But whenever we ask the Lord to forgive us, whenever he becomes our shepherd and he, we are on his path, we're on the right path, then that path will always have evil on it. There's always going to be things that would maybe trip us up or things that would annoy us. But the, this verse is saying, I will fear no evil for you are with me. It's not saying that there won't be any evil things or that there won't be any dangers along the path of life once we become a Christian. It's not saying that, but what it is saying is that we will not fear it because we know that our shepherd is with us. And this is the first time in the 23rd Psalm where we see the word I, because David was speaking from personal life to the Lord who was his shepherd. He was saying, I, will fear no evil, for you are with me. So who was the you? The you was the shepherd. And that's what you and I can say once we trust the Lord Jesus as our Saviour. We can, as our Saviour, we can say, I will fear no evil, because you are with me. Not that we won't have those difficulties in life, but we won't fear them, because we walk hand in hand with the Lord. And isn't that really wonderful that we can have that comfort that we won't fear things because we are walking with the Lord holding his hand. So that's the context of that verse. So we'll say it, okay? I will fear no evil for you are with me. What about that word fear? That word is a bit like afraid. Sometimes there's things that we're afraid of, isn't there? Maybe it's spiders or maybe it's something that we're afraid of. But that's what the word fear means. I will fear no evil. And evil is anything that is wrong. It's a danger. So let's say it again. 
I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Can we try it again? I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Now, boys and girls, do you think could we say it really quietly? Try it after two. One, two. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. What about saying it really loudly? This time, can you shout it out really, really loud? After two. One, two. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Now, boys and girls, we're going to take some of the words out of it and we're going to make it a little bit trickier just to see can you say it with the words that are missing. Okay? So, first one. I will no evil for with me. Did you get it? I will fear no evil for you are with me. Okay, well, we'll take another few words out. Make it a wee bit harder this time. All right. Try very, very hard. Okay. Will no evil for with very good. How did you get on? I will fear no evil for you are with me. Very good. Right. We'll make it harder again. Okay. After two, one, two. Will for with. Can we put all the missing words in? I will fear no evil for you are with me. Very, very good. And now, boys and girls, we're going to make it really, really hard. Okay. Do you think can we say it? After two. One, two. Okay, how did you get on? We'll put it up once more and we'll all say it together. All right. I will fear no evil for you are with me. Psalm 23 verse 4. All right. I will fear no evil for you are with me. So boys and girls, those of you who love the Lord Jesus, you remember that you have nothing to fear in life because the Lord is with you. I will fear no evil for you are with me. And boys and girls, for those of you who haven't already asked the Lord Jesus to be your friend and saviour and your shepherd, why don't you come today and ask him to forgive your sins and ask him to come into your heart and to be your shepherd. And then you will be able to say, like me and like all of the others who love him, that you will fear no evil, for you are with me. Thank you. The Lord is my shepherd.
My name's William, and it's great to be back here with you again this week. Over the past few weeks, we've been learning all about Joshua and how he brought the Israelites to the Promised Land. Today's story has got lies, deception, and war in it. I wonder if you have ever made a promise that you've made without thinking through the consequences. Say, for example, you're in a toy shop and you see a wonderful big shiny robot or whatever toy you fancy and you really want it and you said to whoever you're with, I will tidy my bedroom every day for a whole year if you get me that toy. Well, you got the toy home and you're complaining for the last few days and you realise there's an awful lot of days in the year and there's a lot of cleaning to do for this toy and you might start regretting that. I've regretted a few promises in the past. And today's story, we're going to learn about a promise that Joshua regretted. So, before we begin, let's clear our minds, get all the fidgeting out of our fingers, tell your mums and dads to stop talking, and get really comfy for this story. He's all ready? Great, let's begin. So, our teaching today comes from the book of Joshua, which as we know from now, is in the Old Testament. After the last few weeks we've been learning all about how the Israelites have been trying to get to the Promised Land. And we know that is the land of Canaan that was promised to the Israelites by God a long, long time ago. Two weeks ago we learned how the Israelites crossed the mighty river Jordan. And when they came across they found this land is full of different types of people. And these people don't believe in God and they look very, very mean. It's a bit like if you've been really looking forward to going on holiday all through lockdown and you've finally got on the plane and travelled a long, long time and you've got to this big, beautiful hotel and you just came into your room and there's another family in it. You wouldn't be happy, would you? Well, the Israelites weren't too happy either. But God knew these other people would be in the land and he knew it when he made the promise. So God must have a plan on how he was going to get the Israelites in. Last week, you learned all about the walls of Jericho come tumbling down, and you learned that God was with the Israelites. And in fact, God was with the Israelites wherever they went in Canaan. If there was anybody who opposed them, God was with them, and they always got victory. It was a bit like having a cheat code in a computer game. Whatever it happens, they couldn't lose. The Canaanites, that's the people who already lived in the land, were getting scared, very scared. Normally these people hated each other and were constantly hitting each other over a head of swords and things. But now they decided they had to team up to try to stop the Israelites. Now you and I both know that if the whole world teamed up against God it would do no good. For God's all powerful. And there was one wee city of all these Canaanites that was a little bit smarter than the rest. And they looked at what was happening and they thought there was no good joining this alliance because God and the Israelites will just beat us. They realised the only way for them to survive was to trick the Israelites. This city was called Gibeon. And they had studied the Israelites for the last few months as they had been making their way around Canaan. And they had learned that the Israelites had made a promise to God a long, long time ago. That when they arrived in the promised land they wouldn't make treaties that means make friends with anybody in the land so they knew that if they went to the israelites they wouldn't be friends and so they had to figure out a way to trick them so what were they going to do well they were going to be super duper crafty what they did was they went and got their oldest most dirty clothes like the clothes lamps had your wash basket at home and they put them on then they went and got the most mouldy, disgusting food they could find as well and put it beside their donkeys. And they got some wineskins. Now wineskins was the, what they put their drink in when they were walking through the desert because they didn't go off. And these wineskins were very old and hadn't been used for a long time. And they put them on the donkey. Then they set off to the Israelite camp. So in the Israelite camp, imagine you're Joshua. You're very busy. You're worried about this super team of all the baddies that are trying to come and attack you. You know God's with you, so you're not overly worried, but you have to be on the lookout. You also have to look after all your Israelites. All the nation of them are trying to look after all their needs, making sure there's enough food and water. And also, you've got all this new land. You're trying to put people into different farms and towns and villages. 
Basically, you have an awful lot on your plate. Well, you're sitting in your tent worrying about all this when you hear somebody outside yelling, Joshua, Joshua. So you stick your head out of the tent and what do you see? You see these people coming through the camp on some donkeys and they look filthy. You come on out and they say, Joshua, we come, we've heard about God and we want to be your friend. So immediately you're thinking this is good news. You go over to the people and you see the clothes again and they are filthy. And you think to yourself, but when you were in the desert, walking from Egypt all the way to Canaan, and how dirty your clothes were got. And you're thinking to yourself, boy, these people must have been walking for a very, very long time. Then you look into one of their bags and you see all this rotting food. And the Canaanites see you looking at the bag and say, all that food was fresh when we left our home far, far away. Just like these wineskins. And you look at the wineskins and they're all empty and cracked. And you start to feel a bit sorry for these people. They say, we've came from so far away because we've heard about your mighty God and we want to be your friend. Joshua says, it's all good, no problem. And he signs an agreement with him for friendship, saying that the Israelites will never hurt these people. And he made this promise under God. And when they went, and he thought nothing more of it, until three days later, when your Israelite army has came to a new city called Gibeon. And, much to your surprise, Rather than the city being ready for war, you look up in the walls and there's your friend from three days ago, standing waving at you. Joshua had a sinking feeling in his belly. Oh, he's made a terrible mistake. He's realised he's been tricked. He calls the people down and says, why have you tricked me? And they said to Joshua, Joshua, we knew you made a promise to God all those years ago that you wouldn't make friends or treaties with anybody in the land of Canaan. So we had to trick you into believing that we came from far away so you wouldn't hurt us. But Joshua was in a conundrum here. He had promised God not to enter any treaties, but he had also made a promise to these people not to hurt him. So what was he going to do? What would you do? Well, Joshua showed God's mercy. These people had tricked him and lied him and been deceitful. But Joshua honoured the promise he made to these people. Just as God honours the promises he makes to us. Joshua told the people they could live in the land of Israel as long as they worked for the Israelites. And they would live in peace. So, why do you think this story is in the Bible? Why do you think that God had put this story, he wants you to learn about this story of the tricks being played on the Israelites? Now, three things. Firstly, it shows God was using his awesome power, not to, just to achieve victories for the Israelites, but also to show his power to all the people living in the country, all those Canaanites and all the other tribes who didn't know or believe in God. With all these victories, they started to understand that God was all-powerful and start to come to believe in him. Secondly, Joshua didn't think he needed to pray to God when the when the Gibeonites came, he thought he knew best. He thought this was such a small wee thing in his days, people coming, asking to be friends. And you know, this is a mistake I and you make all the time. We always forget to pray to God about all of the small things. We're usually really good at praying to God when we've got big problems on our mind. But God loves to hear about all the small things too. All the little things we do at school and with our family. We need to pray to God all the time about everything. If Joshua had prayed to God before he made that agreement, God would have told him no, and he wouldn't have got himself into this mess. Lastly, we learn about God's mercy. Mercy is something you hear loads of times in the Bible and throughout Sunday school as well. It's so, so important. God's mercy was shown to the Gibeonites and it's been shown to us. We know, like those Canaanites, that we are sinners. That means that we do things that God doesn't like or approve of. And if it wasn't for God's love and his promise of salvation through Jesus, we would die. But our God is merciful and oh so loving. He loves us so much that he sent Jesus, as you know, to die for us. And it's through that everlasting promise that we can have everlasting life as long as we follow in Jesus. Boys and girls, you sort of listened really well today, and so your mums and dads. Again, we've got some lovely fun activities in your workbook. Thank you all for listening, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye.
today we're going to sing a song about our very good God who loves and cares for us. It's called Clap Your Hands. Now I'm sure you already know how to clap your hands, but just in case you don't, you take one hand and the other hand and you hit them together and they make a sound like this. Hang on. That's not right. Oh, there we go. Okay, how about you clap along with me? just an amazing thing. Boys and girls, I hope you all want to trust and love the Lord Jesus as your Saviour. I really pray that you will do this. Boys and girls, I love today's story, but you know, I just pray that you and all your family will just keep on watching Greenwell Street Kids and keep on listening to the story. So can we just close in a wee word of prayer? Let's all pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this great story from your word, the Bible. Lord, I just pray that every boy and girl watching today will just listen to your word and Lord, want to follow you. Lord, they will want to trust Jesus as their saviour and friend. Father, I ask that you will keep all our boys and girls safe and well this week. Lord, help them with all they're going to do Help them in their schoolwork and Lord help the boys and girls at nursery and playgroup to have lots of fun. Father, I just ask you to be with us and watch over us. In your precious name I pray. Amen. So boys and girls, that's us. Another week of Greenwell Street Kids finished. You have a great week. You keep well. Have loads of fun and be safe. I'll see you soon. Bye.